Assalamu alaikum. This is Ratulha. Welcome to my channel. So I'm starting with second year chapter number five. Chemistry. Which chapter number five? D block elements. Okay. So what are the elements? in the d block the elements whose electronic configuration ending on d or partially in the d so these are called d block elements they are basically two types sorry one type also called outer transition element outer transition elements okay D block elements are also called outer transition elements whose electronic configuration ends at D orbital. The elements which have partially filled D orbitals either in the ground state or in one or more of their ions are called D block element. This is the basic definition. So all the group elements of starting from 3B to 8B. Okay, and then 1B and 2B. These are the 10 blocks in between the 1A and 2A group. Okay. They're 1A and 2A group. And then rest are, this is the middle portion of the periodic table. This, uh, these all are elements belongs to D block. Okay. Starting from 3B to 8B, there are in total 10 blocks. 1B, 2B and then these eight. All right, what are the general characteristics? Now talking about the general characteristics of the D block elements. They are all hard metals, hard, strong. They have high melting points, melting points and boiling points. Both are high metals and are good conductors of heat and electricity. Okay. Characteristics of D block. City. Second is they're all ductile metals. ductile metals they basically usually but form alloys with each other They also form interstitial compounds with non-metals like carbon, boron, nitrogen, hydrogen, etc. These are the non-metals. They form interstitial compounds just like um, you can combine any of the D block elements with these non-metals. So the compound form is interstitial compounds. They are mostly stable. Okay, most of the elements have a great tendency to form stable complexes. They can form paramagnet compounds. Paramagnetic compounds. And what else? They are all colored elements. Okay, these all were the properties for D block elements. Now talking about the extraction of copper. Extraction of copper. The 
these are the importance ores of carbon from sorry copper for which the cores uh, for which the copper is obtained okay so copper basically exists in combined state so therefore uh, it has been extracted from these ores the first ore is copper pyrite very important ore chalcokite and malachite green these are the three important ores for the extraction of copper okay basically copper ore is first concentrated by float flotation method then the ore is roasted means what does roasted mean heat it strongly in current of air okay and then it's smelted smelted with means mixed with sand to form molten meat and then molten meat is formed then we starting the process with bisimerization first process is bisimerization process what we do in this process the molten meat which is obtained molten meat is heated in a bessemer converter we use silica with this with silica we put molten meat in the bessemer converter with the silica and with uh, hot air we give a hot blast of air which causes the reaction to take place then the reaction takes place the iron impurities in this iron impurity the iron impurities form slag and floats on the surface of converter okay and the iron impurities is removed how it remove it uh, come at the surface of the converter then the copper is obtained at last the copper is obtained and is is called blister copper okay and is about 99% pure 90 99% pure but one drawback is that it is unfit for the electrical works it is not fit for electrical means cannot use in the electrical wires these all wires are of copper then what we do refining of copper how we are doing its refining then blister copper is refined by electrolysis okay in which uh, means how we are doing electrolysis in which impure copper blocks are used as anode copper blocks impure copper blocks okay and the thin sheets of pure copper coated with graphite act as cathode graphite coated with copper and then the electrolytic cell is filled with copper sulfate the solution which is being used in the electrolysis is filled with a sulfate copper sulfate cuso4 this is the solution in the electrolyte okay so with the uh, also acidified sulfuric acid is also used the current we provide is 1.3 volts and this produces 100% pure copper okay or the impurities are being left behind at anode as mud impurities remain at anode and we extract the copper from cathode uses of copper copper is mainly used for electrical wiring 
all the wirings are of made of copper electrical wiring also used for plumbing utensils and many important alloys like brass bronze okay copper is being used in all these alloys now i'm talking about the different compounds silver nitrate silver nitrate is also called lunar caustic okay how it's being prepared it's being prepared by the treating nitric acid with silver matter it decomposes to silver and nitrogen dioxide at 450 degrees centigrade temperature is 450 its preparation is not that important that's why i'm not writing it here the preparation equation prepared by just you have to remind remember this as prepared by using nit treating nitric acid with silver metal that's it at 450 degree centigrade temperature silver nitrogen dioxide deposited where it's being used it's used as a laboratory reagent for detection of halides laboratory reagent for the detection of halides okay this was the one used also used in photography and medicines okay photography medicines and uh, also for removing hair growth from skin this is being used okay i'm talking about the next compound copper sulfate copper sulfate also known as blue vitriol okay so also called blue stone okay blue stone neela thota in urdu it can be formed by the treatment of copper metal copper metal copper oxide with concentrated sulfuric acid sulfuric acid okay these are the preparation of copper sulfate when it loses water of crystallization at 230 degree centigrade okay to form colorless anhydrous copper sulfate and it's used in for the very much used for the electrolysis purpose for copper plating used for the preparation of copper plating in electric cells in making green pigments dyeing to kill fungus molds dyeing molds to kill fungus these all are the uses of copper sulfate known as blue vitriol also used for the manufacture of artificial silk okay artificial silk germicide and fungicide antiseptic timber preservative these all are the uses of this copper sulfate 
Now the next is potassium chromate. Potassium Okay. Potassium chromate is a power oxidizing agent and can be obtained easily by chromium oxide with potassium hydroxide. When we react these both, so potassium chromate is obtained is a lemon yellow crystal soluble in water. Potassium chromate is a lemon yellow crystalline substance. Its melting point is nine around 968 degrees centigrade and is very soluble in water. Further, its uses are is used for uh, as a laboratory reagent. And uh, for to avoid corrosion inhibitor of corrosion. Tanning leather dyeing manufacture of chrome yellow pbcr4 these all are the uses tanning leather dyeing and manufacture of chrome yellow this was potassium chromate now talking about potassium dichromate Potassium dichromate, also known as Surk Khahi, is an orange red crystalline solid. Okay. Orange red. Red crystalline solid. That was lemon yellow potassium chromate, potassium dichromate, orange yellow crystalline solid. Its melting point is low 398 degree centigrade. Melting point also moderately soluble in water. Its uses are used in the preparation of pigments. Pigments. Like acetaldehyde, acetaldehyde, ethyl alcohol, leather, tanning, tanning of leathers, cleaning of glasswares. This also being used for tanning leathers and cleaning of glasswares. The liquid used for cleaning glass. The next is potassium permanganate. Is a deep purple crystalline solid. Solid, highly soluble in water, and when it gets soluble in water, it gives pink color. 
and uh, it's obtained uh, by the treatment of magnesium oxide with koh it is a very good known oxidizing agent and its uses are as used as a i'm writing its uses disinfectant use in pharmaceutical in medicines and a powerful oxidizing agent i have already told you oxidizing agent okay now talking about what is corrosion and its prevention so corrosion definition is basically when the metal surface is kept in air for a long time and due to oxidation the metal gets corrode and it's called corrosion the oxidation of metal surface when exposed in air is called corrosion while in metals it's called rusting so the metals which are anti corrosion or corrosion resistance which do not cause corrosion are these noble metals like ag au and pt okay 